In this video, I'm going to take you through the complete process of editing an HDR real estate photo shoot. Let's get started on the import screen. I have a realtor that shoots his own images, but sends them to me for editing. In this example, he shot 10 compositions with three bracketed HDR images. We are going to combine them and then edit them. I'm going to use Lightroom's new batch processing process so we don't have to individually build each HDR file, which used to take forever. So when you're ready, click import and bring the images into Lightroom. We're going to select all of the images, right click on one of them and go to stacking. Then go to auto stack by capture time. What this is going to do is going to take each stack of three images and place them on top of each other. So we don't have to do that manually. At the default settings, it is showing only seven stacks. I know that there's 10 compositions in here, so let's adjust this until we see that. So now we see 10 different stacks of HDR images. So let's press stack. So here's our 10 different compositions with each of its three corresponding exposures. Now let's build the HDRs. Right click on one of the images, go down to Photo Merge, HDR. Now all 10 images are being processed up here. Now we just have to wait. Before what you had to do was select the three images, right click, Photo Merge, and then wait for that image, then select the next three, right click, Photo Merge, select the next three. It was a very long and tedious process. To speed up the old way, you could select the three images and then control Alt H to build the HDR image, but it still took a long time because you had to manually go through each of your photos and select them. Now Lightroom will stack them for you and build them all at once, and you just need to wait for it to finish processing. Now that all the HDRs are built, let's sort them so we can get to work on them. We're in the library, go to text, and just type in HDR. These are our 10 finished HDR images that we can now edit. Here's our first image. What I like to do first is to build a base edit and apply it to all the images. Then I go back and fine tune them all. So let's start off building that base edit. Go to the bottom, make sure we're on the current version. We always skip vignetting on real estate photos. We'll click constraint crop. We won't, we won't fix the verticals yet. We'll do that when we do individual editing. We're just building the base edit right now. We'll apply our settings here, remove chromatic abrasions and enable profile corrections. We'll add our standard 100 of sharpening and we'll add 50 to our mask. We won't be doing any fine tuning of the colors right now. Let's bring our highlights down and open our shadows all the way up. So this will be our base starting point for all the images. So go down here, click them all, and we're going to do sync. We don't want to sync the white balance, so unselect that, but everything else we're going to transfer over. So press synchronize. And now all of the images have these base starting points. So let's start by fine tuning this first image. First off, we need to fix the vertical lines. We can try auto. And that did a good job. We can see our vertical lines are now straight. Let's go up to the basic panel and it's like it's fix the exposure. That's a good starting point. We'll bring our black point down slightly to add in a little bit more contrast. And let's use the contrast slider and bring it up a little bit just to bring in a little bit more. Let's check our white balance, choose something white and use our clicker. Let's bring our exposure up a little bit more Unfortunately, these images were shot at ISO 800, so there's quite a bit of grain already in them, but there's nothing I can do about that now. 
And then let's just use the easy way and just add a little bit of vibrance to punch up this image. That's a decent edit. Let's move on to the next image. So same thing. Let's start by straightening this image. Let's try auto. We'll check our verticals with our line here. Yeah, they're still a little bit off. So let's tilt them. Now we have vertical lines. We don't want we don't want it to look like our house is falling over. Now let's fix the exposure. Bring it up quite a bit. That's a good start. Let's fix the white balance. Cool it down a bit. We have a little bit of this picture or whatever this is showing up here. I'm going to crop it out a little bit just to remove it slightly. It was a little bit distracting. Let's see if we can slightly warm up our shadows. It looks a little bit cool back here. We're just going to do a very little bit. Let's see the before and after. And that's the after. Let's move on to the next image. Another kitchen shot. We can see right away the white balance is off and we're going to need to fix the vertical lines. You can see in this preview here how much noise there is. Let's try auto. See how close we get. We'll check our vertical lines here. And everything looks pretty good. Let's go and fix our white balance. And now our exposure. I want to do a little bit of cropping here. We have a lot of ground. The image is kind of pointed down versus how I would have shot it. So let's get rid of a little bit of that, but not all of it. I still want to be able to see into this other room here, and I want to see the cabinets here. So that's a little better. So here's another image of the kitchen. We're going to need to try and match the white balance. But first we're going to start with our vertical lines. Looks good. Bring our exposure up. And now we'll fix our white balance. That's a little too cool. So this looks a little better. Let's look at our other image to see how they look. This one looks like it has a little bit of a magenta shift. So let's see if we bring it down. Now let's compare it again. Looks pretty close. This one almost looks a little green. So we'll key in a manual amount. Let's double check our exposure. That's about as far as we can push it. Maybe we'll add a little bit of vibrance to try and bring out some of these colors. And we'll go back and do the same on this image. So let's compare these two. Looking good. One more kitchen shot. Let's fix our verticals. Looks good. Back to our exposure. It's unfortunately shot where they were shot with these settings. ISO 800, F3.5. We have a lot of grain. We don't really have the depth of field that we need. We probably could have done with five brackets instead of three. We're losing a little bit of highlights here. White balance looks good. 
when viewed smaller on the MLS, these will still look pretty good. And I'm going to bring up the vibrance a little bit too. All right, next image. So we can see here our verticals are quite off. Let's see if we're able to fix them or if it's going to look, or if we're going to lose too much of the image. No, that works. We kind of have a lot of ground here. Maybe we'll crop it a little bit. But let's start with our exposure. Then we'll go to white balance. I like to make my images as bright as possible, especially for real estate photos. That looks good. Let's apply a small crop. Mm, I think it was better before. Let's undo that crop. Let's see, next bathroom picture. Once again, fix our verticals, double check them, fix our exposure, and white balance. Looks pretty good. Let's see if we can push the exposure a little bit. That's about as far as we can go. We can bring the black point down a little bit. Let's double check the black point in the other pictures. I kind of forgot about it. We'll bring it down a little bit. That one looks good. These are fine. Let's see, now we're on the bedroom image. Let's get our vertical straight. And now our exposure. And white balance has a little bit of a green tint. Let's see if we can fix that. Somewhere in between. That looks good. And we'll go with a little bit of vibrance. There's a little bit of a yellow cast here. Let's see if we can pull that out using saturation. Bring the yellow down. Maybe orange too. Let's see, that's the after and before. So we need to bring the orange back. Cause we're losing color here. Bring the yellow back a little bit. So we'll go less aggressive. We'll grab the brush. So we'll brush in this area, use Alt to remove the spillover, turn off our mask, and what we'll do is we'll just lower the saturation here. There you go. Now the blanket is nice and crisp and white. Next image. Fix the verticals. Fix the exposure. And fix the white balance. Too warm. Let's try another spot. That's looking good. Exterior shot. Bring our exposure up a little bit. Bring our white point up. Black point down. Let's try and punch up the grass and the sky a little bit. So we'll go to luminance. Let's start with the sky. We'll choose blue, bring the blues down. We'll go to saturation and bring the saturation up. 
That looks pretty good. Let's do the same for the green for this lawn. Bring the luminance down just a little bit. Saturation up. Let's see the before and after. And then lastly, let's bring the white point up a little bit more. Right there. So we're just about clipping in the blue. So let's go back and double check our work. First kitchen image. Well, that's about as good as I can do with the files that I'm working with. It makes it so much easier with this new batch editing process that Lightroom gave us. For a full 30 image real estate shoot, I used to spend an hour just building all of the HDR images. Also, it used to take me a lot longer because I was shooting on a full frame Nikon. These images that we're working with here come from a crop sensor Canon, an older one too. So they're pretty small and easy to work with. I'm going to need to re remind my realtor about what settings he needs to use. Usually I recommend F14, ISO 100, and at least three brackets, sometimes five. If there's a bright window like in this image, I'll shoot five brackets instead of three. So I know I have all of the range. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.